I'm here with Alexander Mercurius, editor in chief of the Durant. Alexander, let's talk about uh, Juncker's replacement, Ursula von der Leyen, who is going to be the new EU commissioner. We did a video a couple of days ago on um, Christine Lagarde taking over from Mario Draghi at the ECB. And here you have the former German defense minister who has uh, now been promoted to become the EU commissioner. And just when you thought things couldn't get any more ridiculous in Brussels, uh, von der Leyen has appointed her commissioners, the commissioners under her, and she's decided to go full PC retard and give them just the most ridiculous titles you could possibly give to these commissioners. It's going to be a little bit more of a fun video that we're going to do um, highlighting just how absurd Brussels and the European Union have become. And uh, we've got corruption case against um, an EU commissioner um, in the Congo, which we'll get into. But Alexander, let's take a look at some of these titles that von der Leyen has uh, given out to her underlings. You have now the um, executive vice president who has also been dubbed the vice president of an economy that works for people. You, <laughs> you have the ex another another executive vice president of the European Green Deal. You have an executive vice president for a Europe fit for the digital age. I, I don't know. I don't know if von der Leyen's trolling people <laughs> with these titles. If this is a joke or if she's absolutely serious. You have a commissioner, Alexander for, um, let's see, budget and administration and a stronger Europe in the world. You also have um, a vice president for protecting our European way of life. Alexander, what do you make of, of this? I, I don't know if I should take von der Leyen seriously. I know she did a terrible job in Germany as defense minister. I think she's, she's already proven before she even gets into Juncker's chair that she's just going to be a complete train wreck of a disaster. Well, I agree. I have to say, I mean, these are almost comical titles. I mean, we used to have, uh, uh, you know, uh, a Monty Python. You know, people may know Monty <laughs> Python in uh, at Britain, which is this comedy show from the 1970s. And we had there a, a famous sketch about the Ministry of Silly Walks. Well, it, it's almost on that level. I mean, you know, uh, uh, the, the joke has now become the fact, at least in Brussels it has. I mean, these are bizarre titles. They're not just bizarre, but the other thing they do is they make it very difficult to understand what these people are supposed to be doing. So, I mean, you know, the minute the commissioner, you know, for... Uh, uh, Looking after, you know, the the European uh, form of life is apparently going <laughs> protecting to be our European way of life. <laughs> for protecting our European way of life, that's supposedly going to be he's, that person is going to be concerned with immigration issues. But of course, you know, we mustn't think that this person is against immigration. Presumably, they're going to be pro immigration because, as I said, this is also. Uh, um, um, PC, as you said, but I mean, it's PC in the most ludicrous way. Now, what of course it shows is two things. Firstly, I, I think we haven't yet reached the stage where any European government would give its ministers these uh, crazy titles. So the fact that it happens in Brussels shows in some ways that, you know, the commission in Brussels is way off uh, 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 absurd. And at the same time that, you know, it's not to be taken seriously. At the same time, we are obliged to take this thing seriously because, of course, the commission is increasingly becoming an impact, uh, a more and more powerful force in European life. I mean, it, it has uh, abilities to change all kinds of events, uh, decisions. It makes decisions every day that affect hundreds of millions of European citizens. And as you rightly say, uh, Ursula von Leyen was a terrible defence minister in Germany. Even the Germans say so. Even people in her own party say so. She has been promoted to become uh, uh, the president of the European Commission. And her first step <laughs> is to do something like this, which, as I said, is both a joke it's, it, but, but, you know, it is intended, apparently, to be intent, taken completely seriously. Uh, one doesn't really know, looking at this, whether to laugh or to cry. I mean, I'm laughing, 
But I mean, maybe people should be crying because this is the mentality of the people who are now in charge. Yeah, I mean, this is just crazy that she's the commissioner of the European Union and this is what she comes up with. I mean, this is this is stuff that a fifth grader would do. Well, yes. I, I mean, it's beyond pr protecting our European way of life. The the vice president of a European Green Deal, of an economy that works for the people. Executive yes. vice president of an economy that works for the people. The writing's a little small, so I'm I'm squinting to look at it, but but geez, on this chart that I have that you guys will see, the viewers will also see on their screen. But I mean, this is absurd. An economy yes, I mean, that works for the people? Well, it did. Well, I mean, what sort of economy? This is propaganda, I mean, yeah. isn't it? I mean, well, she's, it try, is, she, yeah, she's that, trying that, to bullshit that, us. That, that is, of course, the other thing. That's, a, that's, that's the sinister part of all of this, because, of course, it is propaganda. It, 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 it commits the European Commission to propagandizing a, 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 a neoliberal perspective of, on the world. I mean, it's, it's, it's what I would call a faux leftist view of the world. This despite the fact that Ursula von Leyen comes from what is supposed to be Germany's conservative party, but this is, as I said, a faux leftist, neoliberal view of the world. These, these, are, these bizarre titles all imply that. And um, it, it, all, it shows the way the, this ideology, this neoliberal ideology, is going to be increasingly opposed, imposed through the vehicle of the European Commission. So that's the sinister side of this. But at the same time, it's difficult to avoid laughing when you come up, when you come up with titles like this. I mean, before, uh, before uh, um, you know, Ursula von Leyen was appointed. I mean, was the European Economics Commissioner? Was he, you know, was he running an economy that was not working for the people? Well, maybe he was. <laughs> Interesting. He definitely admission. was. <laughs> maybe, maybe people in Greece and Italy and Spain and Portugal will agree. But what is actually going to change now? Yeah, she's I mean, putting fl yeah. fluffy names, fluffy titles for. I think you're right for something sinister that's on the horizon. Yeah. In other words, more pillaging and suffering at the hands of Brussels disguised yes. in these in these fluffy little titles that that that, that a five-year-old would come up with Al Alexander um you know uh, the, uh, yes I mean the other thing I have to say of course I mean I'm in a country Britain where there's this huge conflict over Brexit I mean these absurd titles are not going to help the Remainer case here at all I mean the uh, um, um, anti anti-EU uh, people in the media and, and the pro -bre and the Brexiters in the Conservative Party and in Nigel Farage's party are just going to have absolute joy with all of this. This, is, this fits entirely into all the things they've been saying about the European Union and about the European Commission and what kind of a bizarre place it's becoming. And people will be saying, you know, do we really want to be part of an organization, a, 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 a union whose government, uh, I mean, which has a joke government like this. A bunch of nutcases. I mean, Farage yeah. should have a field day with this. He will. He will. <laughs> Absolutely. He I mean, it's, it's the only the only place in the world I can think of, that maybe, maybe the U.S. government, I don't know, Alexander. You know, the, these people do so poorly in their previous position. Yes. They get promoted to these EU titles, these EU jobs, which are just complete fluff. They have all this power and they do zero work. They, they just destroy lives. These are totally incompetent people from Christine Lagarde to von der Leyen. Yes. I mean, these, it's unbelievable that we're putting these people in charge of Europe. Well, indeed. I mean, the one was, as we just said, in a, a failure as defense minister in Germany. So, I mean, the German military is in extremely poor shape. The other one was a failure. Uh, I mean, we did a program recently about Christine Lagarde and Argentina and how she completely messed up the situation in Argentina and is looking like losing for the IMF 50, 50 billion, 50 billion dollars. This after the shambles of Ukraine. After On top the of disaster. 25 billion in Ukraine. Exactly, exactly, 25 billion in Ukraine. Uh, there was the disaster in Greece. Lagarde has failed in all of this, and yet she's now being appointed to run the European Central Bank. 
I mean, it, 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 it's surreal. And as you rightly say, already there is a, a, a corruption investigation in one of these commissioners. Now, I'm not... I'm not going to say whether or not this is the, this is this is one of the the Belgian commissioner well, who is, who you, is. You want me to, you want me to read it out because it gets yeah, even, yeah, even, yeah. even funnier. I mean even stranger. Yeah. So the yeah. EU's next justice commissioner, yeah. justice commissioner, yeah. Belgium's yes. Didier Renders is being investigated for alleged corruption and money laundering in the Democratic Republic of Congo. So now you have the justice commissioner of the EU. Uh, being investigated for corruption charges in Congo. Yes, I mean, can I just say, of course, I mean, like everyone else, he's entitled to the presumption of innocence. I'm not going to say whether or not he's corrupt, but all I will say is he's not the first person in the European Commission to have corruption allegations hanging over him or her. There have been lots of people. Uh, um, Christine Lagarde was found to be grossly negligent Whilst an official, whilst a minister in France, in the way in which she mishandled a corruption investigation into uh, uh, of an important French businessman, as one example. But of course, grossly negligent. But there was never any action taken against her. Now this person is being investigated, and he's going to be the justice commissioner. And of course, uh, um, uh, the Democratic Republic of the Congo was a Belgian colony. Um, which um, was devastated brutally by Belgium, as anybody who's familiar with the history of Africa uh, knows. And he is floating upwards, it would seem. And of course, we have an incompetent uh, former defence minister, no suggestion of corruption there, but suggestions of gross incompetence. And she's beginning to become the president of this extraordinary organization. And it's going to have all these uh, uh, crackpot names attached to it. I mean, if you're Li Xi Jinping in China or Donald Trump in the United States or uh, Vladimir Putin in Russia, are you going to take any of this seriously? Are you going to take these people seriously? Are you going to look at the European Union and say to yourself, run by people like this, with titles like that, that these are serious people that I can negotiate with and do deals with seriously? Hardly. Yeah, I mean, if you're in the UK, just, just get out. I mean, get mm -hmm. out before these, these people just wreck the whole damn thing. Well, Lagarde Nigel Farage and, and von der Leyen. I mean, they're they're going to wreck the whole thing. Lagarde was a disaster. Let's not forget that she also, you know, just ran to the banks in Cyprus and just committed outright robbery. Absolutely. So, I mean, they all made I, out I, like I, bandits, you know, taking I, what ten, fifteen billion from Cyprus banks and divvying it up between themselves. I forgot to mention Cyprus, and of course, I mean, you know, you you you, you uh, are, are Cypriot. You'll remember the extraordinary proposal which was made in all seriousness. The, the Cypriot banks, the, 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 the two banks in Cyprus, there were just two banks in Cyprus that had financial problems and that they were going to take money out of every single bank account in Cyprus, including from the banks which were solvent in order to bail out these two banks. So you take a problem in two banks you make it general across the entire banking system. You cause a, a, a potential bank run of every, every bank in Cyprus. Uh, you, and, and the people who are responsible for this get promoted. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's crazy. I said, I mean, Monty Python would struggle to come up with a sketch that covers this. And as you when you talk about Britain, as you correctly said, Nigel Farage and the hardline Brexiters here are going to have a field day with this. This is made for you, them. You, I, I mean, uh, and it will carry huge traction. You, you know what the, you know what the oh, effed up part is, Alexander, on all this before I forget is yeah, these yeah. are the jokers. Yeah. These are the jokers that outclassed and outwitted Theresa May. Yes. Oh, yes. These are the Absolutely. jokers that are giving Boris Johnson a hard time. This is who Boris Johnson is up against. Well, are indeed, these yeah. jokers? Yes. Give me an effing break. Yes. The well, leadership I, 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 in the UK should be steamrolling these idiots. 
Well, of course it should. I mean, we've said this many times, but we've discussed on many programmes, many of our programmes, that the real problems are not with the, not between the Brit Britain and Brussels. They are within Britain itself. And we see that in the political crisis that we have in Westminster with a government that currently can't function and a parliament that's stopping the government that refuses to dissolve itself or face the people in an election. So the problems are in Britain. But as I said, people like Farage, people like uh, you know the hardline Brexiters in the Conservative Party and elsewhere, and in the Labour Party, there are plenty of Brexiters in the Labour Party also. They will be saying, look, look at this commission, look at these ridiculous people, look at the ridiculous titles they've given themselves. Do we really want to be part of this thing? And uh, uh, Ursula, on Leiden has given them a compelling case. Yeah, we're one step away from having the winner of Eurovision just, you know, automatically be nominated the, the European <laughs> Union Commissioner. We're, we're, we're literally just one step away from that. Uh, I'll, I'll be very careful what you say, Alex. Uh, it's quite possible that Ursula is listening to you now and will say what a great idea that would be. <laughs> All right, we'll leave it at that note. Alexander Becker is Editor-in-Chief of the Durant. Thank you very much. Guys, if you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below. Click on that notifications bell to make sure you get notifications every time we push out a new video. And please make sure to follow us on iTunes and SoundCloud to catch this video in audio format. What else? Uh, Alexander, PayPal, Patreon, Subscribestar. Please donate to us there. That really helps the channel out a whole lot. You will find uh, those links in the description box down below. And you will also find in the description box as well as as a pinned comment, because we always pin it in the comments on top, a link to the Duran shop, our store, which has great merchandise, real merchandise with real reviews, not fake reviews, because the competitors, Alexander, are actually posting fake reviews. It's pretty sad. But that is. <laughs> um, great merchandise. We have all kinds of great new shirts, great new magic mugs. Alexander, you've got a polo. I think you've also got uh, a couple of mugs. Uh, on I do indeed. There. I do indeed. And we you know we're talking about joke people. Let's talk about serious people. Here we have a, a Duran mug with a, a, a very serious man on it. This is a picture of Sergei Lavrov, who is the foreign minister of Russia. I'm just I just I just love the thought of him meeting the European External Affairs Commission. Or, or is that the person who's going to improve Europe's image in the world or whatever it was? I mean, <laughs> minister of European uh... <laughs> Yeah, images abroad. <laughs> abroad. I mean, I mean, Lavrov routinely. You're talking about Theresa May and her hopeless negotiation negotiations. Lavrov routinely has all of these people for breakfast. I mean, whenever he meets them, you just, he he steamroll rollers all over them. I remember when he met with Boris Johnson, by the way, as foreign minister. It was exactly the same. And of course, he must be saying to himself when he hears about these titles, he'll be saying, "What?" But here we are. He's he's on our mug. Uh, uh, these guys are also on our mug. This is the Alpha Force because, of course, the uh, Russia has a real military. None of these countries any longer do, not to any significant degree. There are one or two fr good French military units apparently left. One wonders for how long with somebody like Ursula von Leyen around. But as I said, you know, Russia has a real military. Russia has a real foreign service. Russia has a real government. And we have real Duran mugs, not the fake imitators that you were talking about. Beautiful porcelain, 15 ounce mugs. The reviews we get from our, well, the, the feedback, we don't do reviews, the feedback from our customers who have uh, uh, bought these things have been has been phenomenal. And we also have, as you rightly say, amazing shirts like the one I'm wearing, the polo shirt I'm wearing with our own uh, Duran double-headed eagle there, 100% cotton, beautifully dyed, beautifully cut. It's a beautiful shirt. We've got lots of other shirts just like this. We've also got a whole host of new shirts and merchandise coming out. We've got shirts, we've got stickers, we've got hats, we've got hoodies. We've got lots of great things in our shop. We've also got books on Brexit. You know, we mentioned we'd be talking about Brexit. 
we've also got books on Russiagate, another incredibly complicated uh, subject that you know you really need to read a book to understand. And we've got two books on Russiagate there. Lots of great things on our shop. Uh, help the Duran, help yourself by getting these great things from our shop. Alex will tell you how to. Just look in the description box down below. You will find the link to the Duran shop. Alexander McCurr, Senator-in-Chief of the Duran. Thank you very much. Until next time, everybody, take care.